हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर लुबना सिद्दीकी फ्रॉम जोग्राफी डिपार्टमेंट जे एम आई टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट 1980 व्हिच कम्स अंडर द पेपर एनवायरमेंटल जोग्राफी द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आर नंबर वन टू अंडरस्टैंड द नोशन ऑफ डिफरेंट फॉरेस्ट लॉज एंड इट्स नीड नंबर टू to confer familiar understanding about forest conservation act 1980 and its necessity number 3 to discuss salient features of forest conservation act 1980 number 4 to know amendments in the forest conservation act 1980 number 5 to examine drawbacks of forest conservation act 1980 now introduction a forest referred to as a wood or the woods in an area with a high density of trees forest may vary significantly in size and have different classifications according to how and of what the forest is composed tree forest cover approximately 9.4% of the earth surface or 30% of the total land area though they once covered much that is about 50% of the total land area they function as habitats for organisms hydrologic flow modulators and soil conservers constituting one of the most important aspects of the biosphere thus viewing their necessity there is need for the conservation of forest forest conservation is the exercise of planting and sustaining forest areas for the benefit and sustainability of future generations the conservation of forest also stands and aims at a quick shift in the composition of tree species and age distribution forests are center to all human life because they provide a diverse range of resources and multiple benefits too forest conservation refers to a range of activities tools and approaches to achieve forest health and biodiversity objectives including in managed forest where harvesting occurs these activities are set out in sustainable forest management plans and many are backed by law according to NRCAN 2017 Conservation efforts may take the form of provisional guidelines that forest companies operating on the land must follow such as retain trees used by wildlife during harvesting create a mix of tree species types and age ensure that sections of forest remain connected to meet wildlife habitat needs when we to- when we talk of conserving native forest we really mean a deliberate rationing of the cut so that the use of a dwindling and non renewable resource will be spread over a long rather than a relatively short period this type of conservation important though it is has nothing to do with sustained yield and is not dynamic in concept likewise the second meaning of conservation reflects a philosophy of preservation by locking up is also a static concept nevertheless it is entirely valid in two context number 1 in the maintenance with as little human interference as is possible of primitive or wilderness areas in some of the larger virgin indigenous state forest number 2 in the reservation and maintenance again with the minimum of human interference of forest sanctuaries or strict scientific reserves these are designed to preserve examples of individual species of forest associations or of particular wildlife habitats because of their scientific and ecological values they constitute an important though specialized facet of forest conservation the most important type of forest conservation however is the dynamic one it consists of the deliberate and planned manipulation of forest in such a manner that the many and varied benefits which forest can confer on mankind are maintained unimpaired and are indeed enhanced 
Now, initiatives taken to save the forest. Conservation of forest is a national problem, so it must be tackled with perfect coordination between forest department and the other departments. People's participation in the conservation of forest is of vital importance, so we must get them involved in this national task. The cutting of trees in the forest must be stopped at all cost. Aforestation or special programs like agroforestry, social forestry, one mahutsav and other forest and other forest related movement such as chipko movement etc should be launched and implemented on a grand scale. Celebrations of all functions, festivals should proceed with tree plantation. Cutting of timber and other forest produce should be restricted. Forest Conservation Act 1980 should be strictly implemented to check deforestation. The government proposes to implement the tree plantation program extensively in the country. To increase forest and tree cover in the country, the central government has initiated several measures. Notable among them are launching of national mission for Green India and taking appropriate measures to put in place a proper institutional mechanism for expeditious utilization of amounts realized in lieu of forest in lieu of forest land diverted for non forest purpose number 1 the national mission for a green india it aims at enhancing quality of forest cover and improving ecosystem services from 4.9 million hectares of predominantly forest lands launching 1.5 million hectares of moderately dense forest cover, 3 million hectares of open forest cover, 0.4 million hectares of degraded grasslands. Eco restoration or afforestation to increase forest cover and ecosystem services from 1.8 million hectares forest or non forest lands including scrublands, shifting cultivation areas, abandoned mining areas, ravine lands, mangroves and sea buckthorn areas. Enhancing tree cover in 0.2 million hectares urban and peri-urban areas including institutional lands. Increasing forest cover and ecosystem services from agroforestry and social forestry on 3 million hectares of non-forest lands. Number 2. Agroforestry Agroforestry or agro silviculture is a land use management system in which trees or shrubs are grown around or among crops or pasture land. It combines shrubs and trees in agricultural and forestry technologies to create more diverse, productive, profitable, healthy, ecologically sound and sustainable land use systems. In other words, agroforestry is the management and integration of trees crops and livestock on the same plot of land and can be an integral component of productive agriculture. It may include existing native forest and forest established by landholders. It is a flexible concept involving both small and large sized land holdings. Number 3. Social Forestry Social forestry is defined as forestry outside the conventional forest which primarily aim at providing continuous flow of goods and services for the benefit of people. This definition implies that the production of forest goods for the needs of the local people is social forestry. Thus, social forestry aims at growing forest of the choice of the local population. Some biogeographer stated that conceptually social forestry deals with poor people to produce goods such as fuel, fodder, etc. to meet the needs of the local community, particularly under privileged section. Now number 4, Van Mahutsav. Van Mahutsav was launched in the year 1950 by Shri Kanhaiya Lal M. Munshi, the then Union Minister for Agriculture and Food to create an enthusiasm in the popular mind for the preservation of forest and planting of trees as trees mean water, water means bread and bread is life. It was also hoped that it would create tree consciousness among the people. 
वन महोत्सव ए वीक लॉन्ग फेस्टिवल ऑफ ट्री प्लांटिंग इज ऑर्गेनाइज एवरी ईयर इन द मंथ ऑफ जुलाई यूजली बिटवीन फर्स्ट जुलाई टू सेवेंथ जुलाई ऑल अक्रॉस इंडिया एंड लैक ऑफ ट्रीज आर प्लांटेड द एम बिहाइंड वन महोत्सव वॉज टू प्लान ट्रीज इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोवाइड फ्यूल एंड दस रिलीज काउ डंग फॉर यूज एज मैन्योर to increase production of fruits and add to the potential food resources of the country to popularize the planting and tending of trees in farms villages municipal and public lands for their aesthetic economic and protective needs and etc now fifth is chipko movement in the 1970s an organized resistance to the destruction of forest is spread throughout india and came to be known as the chipko movement the name of the movement comes from the word embrace as the villagers hugged the trees and prevented the contractors from felling them the original chipko movement was started around 260 years back in the early part of the 18th century in rajasthan by bishnoi community a large group of them from 84 villages led by a lady called amrita devi laid down their lives in an effort to protect the trees from being felled on the on the orders of the maharaja that is the king of jodhpur after this incident the maharaja gave a strong royal decree preventing the cutting of trees in all bishnoi villages the chipko movement gained momentum under sundarlal bahugana an eco activist who spent his whole life persuading and educating the villagers to protest against the destruction of the forest and the himalayan mountains by the government now the forest conservation act 1980 this act was enacted to help countries forest it strictly restricts and regulates the de-reservation of forest or use of forest land for non forest purposes without the prior approval of the central government the act lays down the prerequisites for the diversion of forest land for non forest purposes though in 1977 direct reference to forest protection and improvement was made in the constitution through the 42nd constitutional amendment act when article 40a was inserted into it the scholars of forest policies and acts in india would be aware that the framers of the constitution were already committed to environmental protection and its improvement since its inception in 1950 there is also a mention in the constitution about the fundamental duty of every citizen to protect and improve the national environment including forest lakes rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for life and and to have compassion for living creatures according to article 51 a g 1990 The Forest Conservation Act 1980 will be discussed in detail in the next part of this article. Now, Forest Conservation Act 1980 and introduction. The Forest Conservation Act 1980 is a central act of parliament with a view to provide for the conservation of forest and for matters connected there with or ancillary or incidental thereto. The act extends to the whole of india except the state of jammu and kashmir section 2 of the act makes a provision of a prior approval of the central government necessary before a state government or any other authority issues direction for de-reservation of reserved forest which have been reserved under the indian forest act 1927 use of forest land for non forest purpose assigning forest land by way of lease or otherwise to any private person or to any authority corporation agency or any other organization not owned managed or controlled by the government and clear felling of naturally grown trees the term forest land mentioned in section 2 of the act refers to reserve forest protected forest or any area recorded as forest in the government records lands which are notified in a section 4 of the indian forest act would also come within the purview of the forest conservation act 1980 the supreme court has also held 
that forest as understood in the dictionary sense would also be included under forest land. The term forest shall not be applicable to the plantation raised on private land except notified private forest. Tree falling in such plantation would however be governed by state acts and rules. The term tree will have the same meaning as defined in section 2 of the Indian Forest Act 1927. Now salient features of Forest Conservation Act 1980. In 1980 the Forest Conservation Act was enacted for providing protection to the forest and to regulate the diversion of forest lands for non-forestry purposes. The major salient features of Forest Conservation Act 1980 are as under number 1. Prior approval of the central government is essential for de-reservation of forest lands and or diversion of forest lands for non-forestry purposes. Number 2. The state government has been empowered under this act to use the forest only for forestry purposes. If at all it wants to use it in any other way, it has to take prior approval of central government after which it can pass orders for declaring some part of reserve forest for non-forest purposes, for example mining, agriculture, etc. or for clearing some naturally growing trees and replacing them by economically important trees that is reforestation. Number 3. It is a regulatory act and not prohibitory. The provision was made to conserve all types of forest such as reserve forest which are under the direct supervision of the government and no public entry is allowed for collection of timber or grazing of cattle. Then next is protected forest which are looked after by the government but the local people are allowed to collect fuel wood or timber and graze their cattle without causing serious damage to the forest. Then village forest which is assigned to a village community are called as village forest. And the last one is private protected forest which refers to protected areas inside India whose land rights are owned by an individual or a corporation or organization. Number 4. The Forest Conservation Act is an interface between conservation and development. Any illegal non-forest activity within a forest area can be stopped immediately under this act. Some non-forest non activity like construction works, pipelines for water supply, check post, wireless communication etc. were exempted. Number 5. It permits sensible and regulated use of forest land for non-forestry purposes. During 1950 and 1980, the rate of diversion of forest lands for non-forestry purposes was 1.5 lakh hectares per annum. After enactment of the Forest Conservation Act 1980, the rate came down to about 35,000 hectares per annum. At the, time grant, at the time of granting approval under, under the Forest Conservation Act, following conditions are insist upon such as compensatory afforestation, such as compensatory afforestation, treatment of catchment area, reclamation of mining area in phases, provisioning of safety zone areas, rehabilitation of project affected families and plan for wildlife arrangement etc. Number 6. The Act provides for the constitution of advisory committee to advise the government with regard to the grant of approved by the central government according to section 2 or any other matter connected with conservation of forest which may be referred to it by the central government according to section 3. Number 7. On violation of the provision of section 2, the offender shall be punishable with imprisonment for a period extending to 15 days according to section 3a. Any government department or any authority deemed to be guilty of the offence shall be liable to be proceeded against punished accordingly. Number 8. The amendment of 1988 shattered all the expectations of tribal communities and many voluntary agencies placed all the forest land under the jurisdiction of the forest department. Number 9. For the purpose of section 2 of the act, non-forest purpose means the breaking up or clearing of, or, 
or clearing of any forest land or portion thereof for number a the cultivation of tea coffee spices rubber palms oil bearing plant horticulture crops or medicinal plants number b any purpose other than reforestation but does not include any work relating to ancillary conservation development and management of forest and wildlife namely the establishment of check post fire lines wireless communication and construction of fencing bridges and culverts dams water holes trench marks boundary marks pipelines or other like purposes now amendments in the forest conservation act 1980 the amendment which took place in 1988 emphasized upon that forest departments are not allowed to assign any forest land by way of lease or otherwise to any private person or non government body for reforestation clearance of any forest land of naturally grown trees for the purpose of afforestation is also not allowed a period of 15 days imprisonment punishment has to be given if any one contravenes this law then the act of 1980 again got amended in 1988 and has following sections such as extent and commencement restriction on the conservation of forest of use of forest land for non forest purpose constitution of advisory committee a sympathetic shift towards issue concerning tribes was observed when the 1988 forest policy incorporated the clauses to protect the forest to protect the forest dwellers rights which ultimately resulted in the declaration by the government of india of the september 18 1980 guidelines to regularize encroachments and settling disputes on forest lands but in the midst of changing policies legislation legislations and acts as described above the sufferings of the tribes continued a ray of hope dawned on the lives of the tribes only when the then when the then government at the center made a radical departure from what was known as an approach of forest bureaucracy and enacted the scheduled tribes under other traditional forest dwellers that is regulation of forest rights act 2006 thus came into existence the forest rights act that is fra as it is popularly known and became a real and became a reality amid serious debates and resentment from the conservationist environmentalist and other stakeholders including the ministry of environment and forest through this act the forest dependent communities gained eligibility to claim community rights and individual rights on the forest lands under their occupation for cultivation currently the fra is in implementation and it has completed a decade of its existence since its legislation in december 2006 yet the success in meting out justice to tribes appears to be a distant dream in fact a number of reports academic studies and government statistics on the disposal of claims made by the tribes and other forest dwellers and the proportion of rejections suggest a discouraging scenario now drawbacks of the forest conservation act 1980 number 1 this act transfers the power from a state to center for the conversion of reserve forest land to non forest areas tribes are forced to involve in criminal activities like smuggling killing etc when they are stopped from taking resources from forest resources this law is more interested in protecting the forest ecosystem than the tribal people thus the power has been centralized at the top number 2 the act has failed to attract public support because it has infringed upon the human rights of the poor native people they argue that the law is concerned in protecting the trees birds and animals but it is treating the poor people as marginal number 3 very poor community participation in the act remains one of the major drawbacks which affect proper execution of the act number 4 this law does not acknowledge the knowledge of tribal communities towards forest resources thus in its perspective just conservation is important 
the rights of the tribes residing in and on the fringes of it are also equally vital for living in quality and dignified life. Number fifth, it is an established fact that tribes or indigenous people inhabited, cultivated, grazed their cattle and made a living out of forest resources freely without any restriction until the advent of the colonial rule because by the start of the 19th century vast tracts of forest land were already under the control of the British regime. Thereafter it was all about hardships, exploitation and struggle for the, for the tribals as they were declared illegal or encroachers in their own lands. The resentment and rebellion by tribals occurred across the country at different times. These were put down by the colonial authorities. Now conclusion. In conclusion, the forest should be looked upon as a source of revenue. Forests are renewable natural resources. These are national assets to be protected and enhanced for the well-being of the people and nation. Individuals as well as governments can do their part in protecting the forest of the world. Knowledge about the importance of forest needs to be spread so that people become aware of the danger to everyone and everything on the earth by deforestation. People's participation in the conservation of forest is of vital importance. So everyone should get involved in this national task. If we do not start and act now, it might get too late for the cause of conservation of forest. I hope you have understood the concept of Forest Conservation Act 1980. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.